Hello everyone, it is Cryptograns here. Welcome back to another Unity Idle Game tutorial video. This is episode 5.0 and today we're going to be starting the notation system. We're not going to be actually making any notations today. That'll be in the future episodes, but we're going to get everything set up. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here and let's just hop right into it. So for the first part of this video, we're going to be inside of our method script. So let's head there real quick. Inside of this class, we only have one method, which is the upgrade check. I forgot to do this earlier, but we can actually get rid of this mono behavior. And the reason why is because we are not going to be using anything related to Unity Engine inside here. And our script isn't going to go into the hierarchy. Since we got rid of that, we want to make this class a static class because we are going to be using this in other scripts without having to initialize it as an object. Okay, now let's make this notation method. I'm going to be creating the structure today and we will actually be creating more stuff in the future. Since we are going to be returning a formatted string or a number, we're going to be returning a string. So this will be a static string method and I'm gonna just call it notate. We're not going to be returning anything yet, so we're just going to return an empty string for now, just to get rid of the errors. Next, I'm gonna create a static int variable and this will be used for our settings to actually determine which notation we are currently looking at because we're gonna have more than one. This can fit as many notations as you like. So this is useful if you wanna make your own. Next, what I'm going to create is a switch statement, and we're not going to really do anything in here because we don't have like the actual notation setup, but this is where we're going to determine which one we're going to use. So for example, zero is going to be our standard notation. That's going to be the next video, episode 5.1, and I'm just going to return an empty string because we're not going to be really doing anything. Actually, I'll just return a funny string just so we can actually see it in action. And then case one will be scientific, for example, and you just keep incrementing this number for every notation you add. Okay, so now we know how to determine which notation we're going to use. So what I do in idle research is don't show any notation until we hit a million. So we're going to eventually do this, but for now, I'm just going to place a temporary comment just to remind us that we're going to do this once we have our standard notation. So we have our notation method that we're going to be using later on. So now let's create the setting script so we can change this notation variable. Before we actually create the script, I'd like to show you guys what I've done so far. So I have separated the save settings and the main settings. So now there's two buttons. So we're gonna actually have to do this inside the code as well. If you wanna have different tabs like these, make sure you add these buttons as well. And just so you're on the same pace as I am, I have added a notation setting inside of a game object with a grid layout group. I turned this off temporarily so that if I wanted to add new settings, I could just copy and just add some more upgrades, turn this on, turn this off, and the reason why I turn it off is because it kind of has a lot of CPU usage. So it's safe to just to turn it off when you really don't need to use it every single frame. I only want this on just to add more upgrades and then turn it right back off just so everything looks right. So if I need to adjust this, okay, I'll just turn it back on, add some spacing, uh, just like that. I think that looks fine like that. And then I can turn it right back off and it's good to go. But, but we really only need this one button which is the notation and it's going to display notation and then whatever one we're using. So standard would be the default and that's all we need to do. All right, so let's create the script. So I have created this setting script. Let's open it up. So we don't really need any of this. So just clean it up and start fresh. We need to include the TM pro namespace. Let's make our first method and this will be our start method. And we're just gonna call this start settings. Just like the upgrades manager, we're gonna be calling this inside the controller script. Next, let's create a singleton. Okay, so we have our singleton. Now let's call this method inside controller. Let's head to our start method and at the very bottom, let's call settings.instance.start settings. Next, let's head back to our settings script. And inside of our start method, we want to set our notation to a value. So for now, I'm just gonna set it to zero. So that will be methods.notation equals zero. We need to create a variable inside of our data class so we can load it. So let's head to our data class and inside of this data class, let's create an integer. And inside the constructor, we're gonna set notation to zero. So this will be standard notation by default, back to settings. And now we can set our methods.notation equal to controller.instance.data.notation. Now a little advice, I should have done this earlier, but the singletons actually don't need to be renamed as instance. They can be named whatever you want. So if you want to clean your code up, what you can do, um, this is a writer feature. I'm not sure if you can do this on Visual Studio or any other IDE, but what you can do is rename this variable. 
So instead of instance, I'm going to set it to lowercase controller. What this will do is that it's going to rename it. Okay, good. And then what we can do is import static members. So basically we can add using static controller at the top. So then we only have to do controller.data.notation and it's going to work exactly the same thing. It's the same with settings. We can actually go to our controller script, go down here, rename the instance variable of settings by going to refactor. And basically this refactor is going to look for this all over the code and it's going to rename every single one of them instead of having to do it one by one. So that's kind of the nice thing. So I can just name this lowercase settings next. Okay. Import static members, which um, again, it's just the using static settings at the very top. And you can do the same thing for our upgrades manager. So I'm going to do that real quick. So I'm going to do upgrades, lowercase u, and manager, capital M. And then import static members. So how I got this is I'll enter. Now again, you may not be able to do this in Visual Studio, but what we can also try to do is to right click on this and do refactor, rename. And you'll also see the show context actions on Visual Studio. Maybe, again, I'm just guessing. You'll just be able to go to refactor, rename, and go from there. So you can do that for every single script, and that's really neat. So back to our setting script, what we can also do is import the static reference of methods. So then we don't have to use methods dot and then the variable. So we can just get rid of methods and we're good. So we can just set notation to controller.data.notation. Now this only works if we don't have a variable in here called notation already. Otherwise, it's just going to refer to this one here. And then the one in methods is going to be ignored. In that case, that's when you need to do methods.notation. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a bit complex, but if you need to watch that a few times, go ahead. All right, so let's make another method that actually changes the notation setting. It will take in a string parameter. I'm gonna call it setting name. And I'm also going to make another method called sync setting. So we're gonna change the UI in here. So instead of calling it every frame in the update method, we're just gonna change it whenever we load the game or whenever we actually change a setting. And this parameter that we're gonna throw in, which is setting name, it's a string. It's going to be optional, so we're going to set it to an empty string. And if we don't pass in a string at all, we're just going to assume that we want to update all of the strings in here or all of the text. We're going to want to call this inside our start method. We're also going to want to call that in change setting, but instead we're going to pass in our setting name. So now we actually want to update whatever we changed. Okay, so let's make this switch statement in here. And we're going to put in our setting name as the parameter. And for the first case, it's just going to be notation. Very simple. And we're going to break it just because we're not going to do anything yet because I want to explain what we're going to do. What we're going to do is cycle between the notations. So we're going to, let's say we have two notations. We're basically going to alternate between zero and one. If we have three notations, it'll be zero, one, two, and repeat. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to create a string array that has all of our names, like all the notation names inside of them. And we're going to go off of that. So I call this notation names and inside of our start settings, I'm going to initialize this array. And for the first notation, it's going to be standard. And then the next one will be scientific. Okay. So we have two things in here. So we basically want to alternate between zero and one. And we're going to do this by using the length variable inside of this array. So I'm going to do controller dot data dot notation, and I'm going to increment it by one. And if this notation is greater than how many things we have in here, we're going to set it back to zero. And it's actually gonna be minus one. So if our notation is greater than one, so that would be our notation names dot length because we have two things. So length minus one, then we're gonna set our notation back to zero. And things are getting pretty lengthy in here. So I'm gonna make a, a local variable for data. And now I'm just gonna refactor. Okay, things look a bit cleaner. So now we actually change this notation. However, we need to change the notation inside of our methods. So I'm just gonna do methods.notation. And if you remember, we are accessing the methods reference as I explained earlier. So we can just get rid of the methods dot and just do notation equals data.notation. Now this will just change the notation according to the notation method that we've created. So next we wanna sync the setting and we actually wanna change it. So we haven't made that setting yet. Let's do that real quick. So I have created a text mesh pro text array and I called it the setting text and we're only gonna have one of these. So inside of our sync settings, we're gonna be doing the same switch statement. So let me create that real quick. So inside of this notation, we're going to be changing the settings text at index zero because that's gonna be the first setting. And we're going to set that to notation colon new line 
and then we're going to have our notation names at index whatever notation is so we can actually just do notation instead of data dot notation convert this into string interpolation by adding the dollar sign at the beginning of the string and then adding the curly braces at the end putting our variable inside of those so now what if this string was empty like we wanted to change all of them well we're going to actually have to do this manually so let's create an if statement so I've created this if statement. So if the setting name is equal to string dot empty. Now this is the same thing as just an empty string. Oops, I messed that up. Just an empty string like this. But however, we're not creating a brand new string every time we call this. And we are kind of saving some memory by just using a pre-existing object, which is just an empty string. And we actually can't do this in here because this is an object. So we can't um, put anything in here that's an object. Okay, anyway, so if this is true, we're going to update all of our text accordingly so we only have our notation one and then we're going to return this method otherwise if it's not empty we're going to be using the switch statement to determine which one we want to change okay so i want to show you an example real quick let's head back to our methods currently this method is not usable in the way it should be we're going to be doing something very special we are going to be assigning this method to a big double so how do we do that so so we use the this term and then a big double if you're using big doubles and then just a variable name. So we're just going to put number. So basically this allows us to attach this method to any big double variable. So I'll show you an example. Let's head to controller and let's head to our updates and let's mess with our data flask real quick. So I'm going to delete this colon F2 and replace it with dot notate. So you see we're accessing the methods dot notate method, which is in here and that belongs to a big double. So now what it's going to return instead of displaying the flask by default, it's going to say lol. Okay. And then if we were to change it, it's just going to say science if we change the setting. So that is all we need to do in the code. Now let's get back to unity. Okay. So in unity, we want to assign this change setting. So we actually don't have a setting script yet. So let's create that. I'm going to right click on our scripts, empty game object, create empty, call that settings and assign our settings script to this. Let's drag this text for our notation setting into the settings array. And let's head to our notation upgrade, our button. And we want to assign that change method. So I'm going to do that. And we want to put notation because if we go to our setting script. And as you can see, we are checking for notation for this button. So that is all we need to do for the notation part. But we still actually need to make these two buttons do something. So I'll do that after we test this out. So as you can see, it says lol. If we go to settings and change the notation to scientific, it's just going to say science. And yeah, so it works beautifully. We will actually make notations in the next few episodes. Now let's make the save and main settings buttons actually do something. So I have created a game object array called setting panels, and this will be our save settings and our main settings. So let's mess with that. So let's create a public void method, and this will be our navigate settings. We want to take in another string parameter, and by default, we're gonna loop through all of the game objects. So this is our for loop, and in every single panel, we're going to turn them off. So dot set active false. And what we can actually do is convert this into a for each. So it's basically just gonna um, go through every single game object inside of this array and we're going to turn it to false. And I'm just gonna rename these to panel just so it's more clear. Next, we wanna create a switch statement and it's gonna take in location. And for the first one, we're gonna have our save setting. So I'm just gonna put save. And since the save will be first, setting panels at index zero will be true. We're gonna break that. And we're gonna be changing the first index for our main settings. That is all we need to do for this method. So in the settings script, I'm going to assign our save settings panel and our main settings panel. And next I'm going to assign both of these buttons to the proper methods. So the saving will be save and main will be main. Let's give this a shot. Save, main, save, main. So sweet. We can now switch between these two settings. You can add as many tabs as you'd like. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you learned something new, make sure you please leave a like as it really helps out the videos. Consider subscribing if you are new around here and you haven't seen any of my videos before or if you aren't subscribed already. It's a mistake. And if you tend to miss out on my videos and you don't have the notifications turned on, make sure you click that bell so you get notified. I try my best to live stream as much as possible as well. I like to work on my games on stream, so if you're interested in that, make sure you turn on the notifications. If you're interested in beta testing my games or if you just want to support the channel, check out the Patreon in the description below or become a YouTube member today.
Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day or night. I'll see you in episode 5.1, which will be standard notation. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.